Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 29th of January. Protest against a new citizenship law intensify in parts of India. Sri Lanka reports first coronavirus case activates measures. And Afghanistan launches polio vaccination targeting 9.1 million children. And now for all the details. Scores of people who have been staging a sit-in protest against the new Citizenship Amendment Act in Indian capital New Delhi for weeks took their agitation to iconic protest site Jantar Mantar on Wednesday. The protesters, including elderly women and students, demanded the rollback of the new law, which they see as discriminatory for excluding Muslims. Hundreds of people who have been staging a sit-in protest in Indian capital New Delhi's Shaheen Bagh area against the Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA for over a month took their agitation to iconic protest site Jantar Mantar on Wednesday. The protesters, including a large number of women from different age groups and university students, demanded the rollback of the new law as they see it discriminatory for excluding Muslims. तीस दिन से हो गए मुझे अनशन में बैठे हुए लेकिन अभी तक कोई सरकार नहीं है हमसे कोई बात करने और हम चाहते हैं जो सरकार ने काला कानून जो लागू करने जा रहे हैं हम चाहते हैं कि वापस ले ले जब तक नहीं लेंगे हमारा प्रोटेस्ट यहाँ से नहीं हटेंगे The CAA paves way to Indian citizenship to Hindus, Sikhs. Jains, Parsis, Buddhists and Christians who fled religious persecution from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh and settled in India on or before December 31, 2014. Meanwhile, different local organizations called for a Bharat Ban or nationwide strike in order to protest against the CAA and the proposed National Register of Citizens or NRC. People in parts of India, including northeastern Assam province, have been protesting against CAA since it was passed in December last year, as they fear the law would alter their region's demographic balance, while some have welcomed government's stand for its humanitarian help to religiously persecuted minorities. In the backdrop of novel coronavirus outbreak in China that has killed 132 people, the Indian government has issued a fresh travel advisory asking citizens to refrain from traveling to China. The government is on high alert and is taking all preventive measures in order to stop the virus entering India. India's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on Wednesday issued a fresh travel advisory asking people to refrain from travelling to China in the backdrop of novel coronavirus outbreak in China's Wuhan province. The ministry also informed that the list of airports for screening passengers for symptoms of novel coronavirus has been increased to 21. The Indian government is on high alert and is taking all preventive measures in order to stop the virus entering the country. Meanwhile, a government hospital in southern Tamil Nadu's Madurai city on Wednesday inaugurated a new coronavirus ward as precautionary measure. The respirology chief is available here and the uh, uh, Department of Medicine will also assist if the, any uh, problem occurs. But still, there is no case for coronavirus. We, are, we have opened this ward for the uh, precautionary measure. Uh, and the uh, welfare of the patient. India stands at 23rd position amongst the top 30 countries at high risk from the spread of the 2019 coronavirus researchers have identified. In the latest, that that toll due to the novel coronavirus outbreak in China has increased to 132, 
with 5,974 confirmed cases in 31 provincial level regions. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan health authorities have confirmed a Chinese female tourist is the first confirmed case of a person infected with coronavirus in the island nation. Sri Lanka has suspended its policy of granting visa on arrival for Chinese travellers following the case. Sri Lanka has confirmed the first case of coronavirus in the country this week as it has begun evacuating its citizens, especially students from China. 65 Sri Lankans arrived on scheduled flights from China on Monday and more were expected to arrive in the coming days. A senior health official confirmed a Chinese female tourist in her 40s who had arrived in Sri Lanka on January 19 and fell ill on January 25 was confirmed as having the coronavirus following a test on Monday. Sri Lankan authorities have announced Chinese nationals will not be entitled for visa on arrival for now. Sri Lanka's Ministry of Health has said 12 main hospitals in the country have been made ready to deal with the coronavirus that has claimed lives of more than 100 people in China and has infected over 4,520 globally. Moving on, a protest was held by industrialists and scores of workers recently in Pakistan's Karachi city against the rampant gas load shedding faced by industrial units. The protesters said the situation has compounded their problems as they are already struggling due to liquidity crunch. Industrialists and scores of workers recently held a protest outside the head office of state-run public utility Sui Southern Gas Company in Pakistan's Karachi city against the rampant gas load shedding faced by industrial units. Industries in Karachi have been experiencing low gas pressure or complete suspension of supply for the past many days. The protesters urged the government to order complete restoration of gas supply to the industries of Karachi without any interruption. मैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब से रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब अगर इस मुल्क में आप तरक्की चाहते हैं आप चाहते हैं कि हमारी एक्सपोर्ट्स बढ़े तो तो काइंडली आप हमें सप्लाई जो है गैस की सप्लाई हमारी रिस्टोर कराएं तो आप आप जो है इस पे खुशुसी तवज्जो दें कारखाने चलाएं आप कारखाने चलाएंगे एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ेगी उससे मुल्क तरक्की करेगा पाकिस्तान में पैसा आएगा अगर आप कारखानों को गैस बिजली प्रोवाइड नहीं करेंगे तो कैसे मुल्क एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ेगी कि जिस शहर से 50% से ज्यादा एक्सपोर्ट होता है उधर कोई तवज्जो नहीं देता जिस शहर से 67% से ज्यादा टैक्स मिलता है उधर कोई तवज्जो नहीं देता सरकार से ज्यादा जॉब्स हम क्रिएट करते हैं कोई तवज्जो नहीं देता सिंध का 95% टैक्स इस शहर से अदा होता है किसी की तवज्जो नहीं है ना इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है हमें बाकायदा इंडस्ट्री को बंद करने के लिए प्लानिंग की जा रही है the protesters, while blaming the Pakistani government for its wrong policies and incompetency, said the situation has compounded their problems as they are already struggling due to liquidity crunch. The U.S. military recovered the remains of two personnel aboard the U.S. Air Force aircraft that crashed on Monday in central Afghanistan's Ghazni province. The U.S. military had earlier confirmed the crash but disputed claims by the Taliban militant group that they had brought it down. The U.S. military recovered the remains of two personnel aboard a U.S. Air Force Bombardier E-11A aircraft that crashed on Monday in Afghanistan's Ghazni province. The U.S. forces Afghanistan, which is part of NATO-led resolute support in a statement released on Tuesday, said the remains were found near the crash site, treated with dignity and respect by the local Afghan community. Afghan forces and Taliban fighters had earlier on Tuesday clashed in the central region where the U.S. military plane crashed as the government tried to reach the rigged site in a Taliban stronghold. The U.S. military earlier confirmed the crash of its aircraft but disputed claims by the Taliban militant group that they had brought it down. The incident came as U.S. and the Taliban have been in talks to end the 18-year-long war in Afghanistan. 
Negotiations between the two sides began last year in Doha, but have been interrupted at least twice after Taliban attacks on U.S. military personnel. Another round of talks kicked off last week with U.S. Special Representative on Afghanistan Zalme Khalilzad meeting Taliban negotiators. Afghanistan has launched a nationwide campaign to give polio vaccination dose to 9.1 million children under the age of five. The drive by the Afghan Public Health Ministry came as 29 polio cases were detected in the country last year. Afghanistan's Public Health Ministry has launched a nationwide campaign to give polio vaccination dose to 9.1 million children under the age of five. The five-day campaign is focusing 30 of the country's 34 provinces and due to the harsh weather, the anti-polio drive will not be conducted in Bamiyan, Dekundi, Ghor and Badges provinces. The drive has been launched as 29 polio cases were detected in Afghanistan last year. The ongoing insurgency and conflicts have been hindering the efforts to stamp out the infectious disease in Afghanistan as 1.2 million children from areas inaccessible to vaccination teams will miss the ongoing vaccine drive. Afghanistan and neighbouring Pakistan are the only two countries in the world where polio cases are reported every year, according to the Afghan Public Health Ministry. Over 30 elephants participated and showcased their talents at an annual rejuvenation camp held in India's southern Tamil Nadu province this week. The main attraction at the camp was a young female elephant who blew air into the mouth organ, producing a symphonious melody. Elephants in Coimbatore in India's southern Tamil Nadu province wooed visitors as they played football and a musical instrument at an annual rejuvenation camp held earlier this week. Over 30 elephants from different temples across Tamil Nadu participated and showcased their talents at the event organized by government authorities. The main attraction at the camp was Andal, a young female elephant who blew air into a mouth organ producing a symphonious melody. <laughs> The annual elephants rejuvenation camp held at Sri Rangam Temple serves a great opportunity to interact with the biggest terrestrial mammal on earth and it also generates awareness about them. Elephants are deeply revered in India where the elephant-headed god Ganesha is one of the most popular in the Hindu pantheon and is also considered lucky. Internationally acclaimed Asant artist Sudarshan Patnaik paid rich tributes to National Basketball Association legend Kobe Bryant following his sudden demise in California on Monday. Patnaik created Kobe's culture at India's eastern Puri beach to offer his condolences. Renowned Indian Sen artist Sudarshan Patnaik paid tribute to late American basketball player Kobe Bryant, who was killed in a helicopter crash in California on Monday by making a send out of the National Basketball Association star. Patnaik used around five tons of sand to create the sculpture at Eastern Puri Beach to offer his condolences. 41 year old Bryant was travelling with his 13 year old daughter Gianna and seven other passengers and crew when their helicopter slammed into a rugged hillside in Calabasas. There were no survivors. We created this sand sculpture to pay tribute to the famous uh, basketball player who has created this team around the world and a lot of fans around the world. And it's very sad to know about uh, his uh, death, but we will miss him. Brian's death sent shockwaves throughout the world, with basketball stars stunned by the news. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Protest against a new citizenship law intensify in parts of India. Sri Lanka reports first coronavirus case activates measures.
And Afghanistan launches polio vaccination targeting 9.1 million children. Now, viewers can watch the show on SaudiAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.